Can we please go to Carl's Jr.? Whether you know it as Carl's Jr. or Hardee's, here are the top 10 Carl's Jr. facts you absolutely want to know. There's a lot that people don't know about the restaurant, and we're about to change that. Ma'am, this is a great burger. Add controversy. Why? Why, what happened? Back in 2005, the chain started running an ad featuring Paris Hilton. So far, so good, nothing too risque about that. But the issue came from what she was doing in said commercial. She was washing an expensive sports car while wearing a skimpy swimsuit and eating a hamburger with provocative eyes. Let's just say parent advocacy groups were not too happy about this ad being shown to their kids. <gasps> They accused it of being totally inappropriate. But despite the evident backlash, the commercial was a raging success. So much so, in fact, that the website Carl's Jr. specifically created for the ad got so many hits, it crashed. After only seeing the good side of these commercials, the chain decided to turn it into a series and hired more female models and celebrities to star in them. Women like Padma Lakshmi, Heidi Klum, and Kim Kardashian all joined in, and critics kept condemning Carl's Jr. for using sex and exploiting women to sell more burgers. The ads have since been retired, but still, they were in circulation for a very long time and are still available on YouTube. What are you doing on the computer? Started as a hot dog stand. Hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. Even though nowadays Carl's Jr. serves an array of juicy burgers, it wasn't always the case. Just like many other fast food chains out there, it used to be way different than it is today. The story of Carl's Jr. began with a simple hot dog back in July 1941. Hot dog stands were all the rage, and Carl Karcher, a truck driver living in Los Angeles, and his wife, Margaret, decided to get in on the action. They used up all their savings, a whopping $15, to purchase a hot dog cart. 50 bucks ain't bad. They even had to take out a loan against his precious car to afford it. Needless to say, these debts would quickly be paid off. For only $326, the business was now in motion and started getting attention. It wasn't long before they began opening more hot dog stands in Southern California and expanded their vision. The couple then opened their first hamburger joint on North Palm Street in Anaheim. Within a decade, two more locations were opened and the iconic Yellow Star logo was born. By the 1960s, there were over 24 Carl's Juniors, streamlined menus, and renovated dining rooms. Everything was set for the chain to become the huge success that it is today. Carl's Jr. has come a long way since its hot dog days, but it's never forgotten its roots. Just look at the most American sick burger. You! Burgers and fancy wine. Cheers! Or as we say, cheers! Okay, when you think about Carl's Jr., the first thing that comes to mind is probably not fine dining. Granted. But as it turns out, the food at Carl's Jr. can pair surprisingly well with some expensive, fancy wines. Or at least it did in 2006, when the chain partnered with the Palms Casino in Las Vegas. This unusual collab was meant to show how more high-end and lavish Carl's Jr. burgers were compared to the ones offered at other popular fast food chains. The partnership resulted in a combo meal, which was only available at the Palms Hotel. It consisted of a Carl's Jr. $6 burger, fries, as well as a bottle of wine. But not just any wine, a $6,000 bottle of French Bordeaux. Since this technique seemed to work, the chain did it again, this time with Wally's Wine and Spirits, to assist in creating a list of recommended wine pairings for their burgers. The great is 45 the feet. Apparently, the jalapeno $6 burger goes wonderfully with champagne, the bacon Swiss crispy chicken sandwich makes a great companion for Pinot Noir, and the charbroiled chicken club sandwich pairs nicely with Chardonnay. More recently, Carl's Jr. released a limited edition Carl's Jr. Knocking Point Wines Steakhouse Burger Box with three red wines, a gift card to buy the Steakhouse Angus Thick Burger, and steakhouse recipes created by Chef Owen. Uncle Owen? Yeah? What about that one? Carl's Jr. versus Hardee's. Just isn't the same, is it? Here's the moment you've been waiting for all your life. The moment when we tell you why the heck Carl's Jr. reminds you so much of Hardee's and vice versa. 
There's a very simple answer. They're one and the same. Well, almost. You see, depending on where you are in the United States, you won't find the same familiar names. If you live in the Midwest or Mid-Atlantic area, the yellow star will be associated with Hardee's. But if you're on the West Coast, Carl's Jr. is the standard. Oklahoma and Wyoming are the only two states to have both. Otherwise, it's one or the other. But why do they look so similar? Why? 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 Well, it turns out they are owned by the same company, CKE Restaurants, located in California, making them sibling restaurants. More like twins, though. With identical websites, branding, logo, and near-identical menus, the confusion between the two is very much justified. The parent company bought Hardee's in 1997 for $327 million. And while it was able to keep its name and some of its menu items, everything else needed to be adapted. Acquiring Hardee's was the perfect opportunity for Carl's Jr. to subtly expand into the East without having to directly compete with the already beloved chain. The main difference between the two restaurants, aside from the name, is that the menus are catered to fit the tastes of the customers they serve, like Southern-style biscuits, and Western and Southwestern lunch and dinner options. Parties for everyone! Mexican Carl's Jr.? If you can find a greasier sandwich, you're in Mexico! <laughs> Again, just like with many other fast food chains out there, Carl's Jr. wasn't satisfied with what it had and wanted to widen its menu to compete with other chains. Even chains that had nothing to do with burgers at all. Back in 1972, Carl's Jr.'s parent company, Carl Karcher Enterprises Inc., CKE, decided to enter the Mexican fast food scene by opening a chain spin-off called Taco de Carlos. Yeah! Vive la Mexico! Taco de Carlos was blatantly and shamelessly trying to compete with Taco Bell, only it was meant to be the place where you could get it all, your Mexican fix as well as your burger fix. It sold place-specific foods like the California burrito, and while Carl's heart was in the right place, Taco de Carlos was not a success. By the early 1980s, CKE had sold all 17 locations, leaving Mexican food to the real pros. But Carl's Jr. wasn't done experimenting. CKE also tried to get into the coffee biz. They opened a Scottish-themed chain called Scott's Coffee Shops, where waitresses wore plaid skirts while serving coffee and food. This new enterprise didn't work out either, and the burger chain went back to what it knew best, burgers. Trade safe! Breakfast of Champions all right, rise and shine, sleeping beauty! Despite being primarily a burger and burrito chain, Carl's Jr. does offer some pretty killer breakfast options destined to please even the finest palates. From buttery biscuits and overly sugary French toast dips to filling breakfast burritos and iconic sandwiches, you simply can't go wrong. But while the food does pack a lot of flavor, it also packs a lot of calories. Beef cake! Let's take the grilled cheese breakfast sandwich, for example. It has over 800 calories, and the bacon egg burrito, an impressive 1,000 milligrams of sodium. Ordering one of these in the morning should definitely be done with a lot of care and a lot of consideration. We obviously can't talk about breakfast at Carl's Jr. without mentioning one of the most appetizing items on the menu, the breakfast burger. Around for what feels like forever, the breakfast burger features lots of cheese, a beef patty, bacon, half brown ketchup, and because it wouldn't be breakfast without it, an egg. Carl's Jr. actually prides itself on being the first to put an egg on a burger. Even though it used to be only available during breakfast hours, it was so popular the chain eventually made it available all day. This breakfast beast allows you to enjoy many staples at the same time and gives you enough energy to get through the day. You gotta eat your breakfast, man. You need that protein. What the name really means. Say my name. One of the biggest wonders surrounding Carl's Jr. is where the name came from. Most people might think it had something to do with the founder, since, well, his name was Carl, but that doesn't explain the second part of the name, the Jr. Where did it come from? Where, 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 where? Was his father also named Carl, making him the second of his family? While this reasoning could totally hold up, it's not the case. When Carl and his wife decided to upgrade their hot dog stands to hamburger restaurants in 1945, they went all in. A place to sit down, full service, the whole nine. Named Carl's Drive-In Barbecue, the restaurant started to take off quickly, so they wanted to open even more outlets. 
Only this time, they didn't want to open the entire dining room, but just express versions. So they opted for smaller versions or mini Carl's restaurants. To let the customers know that the restaurant was not the original, they used the Junior to designate the quick service and lack of a dining room. So contrary to popular belief, there was no Carl Karcher Jr. It had everything to do with restaurant size. Although, ironically enough, Carl and Margaret did have a son named Carl. Carl! Some trouble with the law. Ooh, someone's in trouble. A successful company is nothing without some good old drama once in a while. Even the best restaurant chains know that one little bump in the road is enough to take you down a notch or two. Hey, where the seatbelts at? Don't worry. They won't be necessary. In the early 1980s, Karcher decided it was time to take CKE public in hopes of making more profits. However, before the end of the decade, this decision would have some people knee-deep in trouble. Sixteen people, most of them members of the family that controls Carl's Jr., were accused of insider trading by the Securities and Exchange Commission. Off to a rough start. The complaint alleged that Carl and Karcher, his brother Donald F. Karcher, president and chief operating officer, and their wives were telling members of the family to sell their CKE shares right before the stock took a nosedive in 1984. The quarterly report showed the profits had dropped 50% compared to the year before, which looked very suspicious in the SEC's eyes. It estimated that they would have made profits or avoided losses totaling $310,000. The SEC sought an injunction ordering them to disgorge profits derived and losses avoided, as well as triple damages. In 1989, Carl and the Karcher family had to pay $664,000 plus additional fines as part of the settlement. My money, my money. There are food trucks. With food as delicious as Carl's Jr.'s, it was only a matter of time before it became available almost everywhere. Even before food trucks became the sensation they are today, Carl's Jr. had already jumped on the trend, debuting its own restaurant on wheels, the Star Diner, in the 1990s. We're gonna buy a food truck! We're gonna get a food truck! Yeah. Named in honor of the chain's mascot, the Star Diner was way ahead of its time. In 2004, the truck, filled with the chain's most popular items, went on a great culinary adventure from California to Utah, serving hamburgers, fries, and drinks to hungry customers along the way. The most notable stop, however, was at the University of Utah versus Texas football tailgate party. The prices were slightly higher than you'd find in a Carl's Jr. restaurant, but the food was just as good. With the rise in popularity of food trucks in the last few years, it would only make sense for Carl's Jr.'s big red truck to still be a thing. Even if the mobile restaurant isn't well known today, it's still in service and can be booked for all kinds of large events like fundraisers, street fairs, and sporting events. With about eight trucks still in operation, if you want Carl's Jr. to cater your next happening, make sure you make your reservation in advance and then let your guests gush about the tasty food they'll be eating. A food truck. Extensive family tree. Huge. Huge. Despite all the bad things Carl Karcher may or may not have done, there's one thing we can all agree on. He was quite the family man. And how could he not be? When you have such a successful business, you want to make sure it stays in the right hands. And who has better hands than your own flesh and blood? Who else? Who else? Ryan. When he died from Parkinson's disease in 2008, at almost 91 years old, Carl left behind a huge family. How huge, exactly? Well, he and his wife Margaret had 12 children. It's already a pretty big number, but it doesn't stop there. Those 12 children had children of their own, amounting to 51 grandchildren. And yes, the grandchildren also had children, leaving 45 great-grandchildren. Talk about an eventful Christmas dinner. And out of all of these children, only one of them was named Carl. Without trying to perpetuate a stereotype, his large family mostly stems from his strong Catholic faith, which encouraged larger families and historically frowned upon birth control methods. Carl was also known to attend Mass at St. Boniface Catholic Church every morning, the same church where he married his wife, and he would recite a prayer before company meetings. There was even a statue of St. Francis of Assisi displayed at CKE headquarters. Amen. Bite into more great videos. Just tap or click. First time here? Then leave us a comment, hit that subscribe button, and ring that notification bell.